and welcome to this episode of Ask the Expert. We are discussing how to improve your chances of getting that great job this year. To avoid those mistakes and those slip-ups, those last-minute heebie-jeebies, we have with us in the studio today Dr. Vikram, author of the New York Times bestseller, You Can Be Hired. Welcome to the show, Dr. Vikram. Thank you, Arsene. Always a pleasure being here. These are tough times for those looking to be hired. How should you go about the job hunt? Well, the job hunt is that just like any other hunt. The question you've got to ask yourself is what am I doing here? What do I want? Do I want more responsibility? Do I want more challenges? Do I see better satisfaction? And once you answer that question, you're all set. You know exactly what to go for. Could you give us an example, elaborate perhaps a little more on what you mean and where could you seek these answers from? I know it, it sounds very <coughs> silly. I mean, you would look inwards to see what you want, but how, how do you go about this? You know, traditionally you would, you would talk to your neighbors, you talk to family to find out, hey, what's that company doing? You know, can I be useful there? Now, you know, things have moved. There are far too many companies and you may not always have a relative or a friend working in a company that you're seeking. Right. See, one of the challenges we face today is the, is the proliferation of a lot of companies. And with that is a lot of information. But a part of the answer is in the question itself. The simple way to go about searching for a company or an opinion on a company is the internet. You go onto the internet, you type out the company name. The first few searches would be company websites which I say is propaganda at times. But then there are blogs <coughs> where people give their opinion about their company. <coughs> These are blogs by current employees, former employees, critics, stakeholders. But mind you, you have to take the blog with a pinch of salt. It's not always the truth. But pretty much it points, it gives you general pointers as how the company it is. Apart from that, I think it's very important to speak to employees of the company. Once you've targeted a company, it's always important to talk to the employees if you can get to talk to them. They generally will tell you how the culture is, things that you wouldn't know otherwise. How many companies should you pursue at any point in time? This is like a big confusion, you know. You go to a job fair, they say, hey, come with at least 20, 30 resumes. You never know what you'll end up with. Well, uh, let me ask you this question. If you're looking for, for a man to marry, Will you date 30 people? Never. You might, you might date 4 or 5. And that's, that's the paradox. In order to look for a good company to work for, if you're looking for more than 5 at a time, you're seriously not in the game. Because the more companies you try to chase, the more you're wasting your time and resources. If you focus on few, the more chances you'll get hired. But now that you have, say, five companies, you've shortlisted five companies, how do you go about creating an impression on them? I mean, I'm, I'm talking this is way before the interview process even begins. All right. Okay. Uh, a recruiting an individual is a two-stage process. The first stage is a screening, and the second stage is the selection. A screening is where they ask for your resume. And how this works is every company, uh, every uh, human resource uh, executive from a company, looks at the job requirements and puts out an ad. It could be the paper or it could be on the internet. Now what you have to do is after you've selected the five critical jobs that suit you, that suit your goals, that suit your ambition, you have to start customizing your resume to suit that particular profile. Now, when I talk about customizing, I'm not saying you lie. I'm not saying you make up stuff. I mean, seriously, you do that, you're in deep trouble. But you need to customize your resume to the job profile. You need to suit that requirement. Can, can you give us an example? Because I, I, I'm a little confused here. Yes. Uh, okay, let me, let me give you a very simple example. If you're looking at a sales profile inside a coffee shop, I'll give you two examples. There's Dunkin' Donuts and there's Starbucks. Now, Dunkin' Donuts from 1950s onwards has specialized in quick turnarounds. It's a takeaway outlet. You go there, you order your coffee, quickly, efficiently, the, the sales 
guy turns you around and you're out of there. Starbucks is more of a place you go and sit down and enjoy the atmosphere. And the barista is usually very knowledgeable about coffee. Now let's assume for convenience sake you have both these qualities in your resume. But to do Dunkin' Donuts, you will customize it to show your efficiency and speed in turning around customers. But for Starbucks, you would emphasize on your love for coffee, your knowledge for coffee, your ability to strike up a conversation with a customer on coffee. And these are two different profiles. But mind you, he's not lying. You had both these qualities. It's just that you chose to send one to Duncan and chose to send another one to Starbucks. So in essence, what you're trying to tell us is that look at the job opening from the eyes of the recruiter and put in information that's relevant and suitable to that profile. Absolutely. See, if you, if you look at parallels from sport, let's look at Michael Jordan. Jordan never played his game according to what he was playing. He played his game according to the opposition. Wayne Gretzky scored more goals because he thought like the opposition. So you've got to think from the mind of the recruiter. Mind you, don't think of him as an enemy, but think from his mind. And if you, if you really help him out, because they're under a lot of pressure too, he's going to reward you. Excellent. So moving on to the next stage that you mentioned, it's the interview itself. And this is probably one stage that gives everyone nervous butterflies in the stomach. You know? How do we think from the recruiter's point of view as to what kind of questions you're going to face in the interview? Right. See, what the recruiter does at the interview stage is pretty much check out what you filled out at the application stage. What you've written in your resume is being checked out at the interview stage. In order to... See, interview, I believe, is an opportunity for you to showcase yourself. It's not only what is written on your resume, it's how you speak, how you're dressed, body language, communication skills. It's an excellent showcase for your entire personality, as opposed to just a few words written on a piece of paper. Grab it with both your hands. How should you go about preparing for this? I mean, do you talk to somebody? I mean, I mean the people always talk about, hey, be punctual, you know, wear the right kind of clothes. You don't want to come in floaters to an interview. I mean, just mentally preparing yourself, if you could give us some input right. on that. See, this is where it's advantageous to have those five companies to start out with, those five profiles. Now you know exactly the culture of a company. An IBM works different from GE. Starbucks is different from Dunkin' Donuts. Now I can't wear a suit and walk into Apple. <laughs> but definitely I can't walk in with a, with, a, with a turtleneck and jeans and walk into GE. It doesn't work that way. You got to know the company's culture. You got to respect that. That's important. They've been there longer than there. You are relatively new as compared to the company. You got to respect that. Be punctual, but hey, if you're there half an hour earlier than your interview time, it really helps to walk into a company, soak in the atmosphere, talk to the receptionist. They're pretty much the windows to the organization. Soothe your nerves. And once you get into the interview, you're much more relaxed. And once you're in there, try to give it your best. Because you've done the research. You know pretty much what is there to know about the company and the position. How do you go about handling these tricky questions? Like, you know, what is the kind of salary you expect? Are you willing to put in extra work hours? Well, the answer to that is very simple. If you're not up to it, don't accept. If you can't put up with the long timings, don't accept. If you're not happy with the salary, don't accept. it. It's much better than to reject the job at the earlier stage than to get into it and quit it six months' time. It looks very bad at the resume. Plus, it's always easy to come up with salary figures from the internet again. And if they're not offering you something in the ballpark region, you can pretty much turn him down and give him the reason for it. If nothing, he's going to appreciate your honesty. He might even recommend you something. The most important tip that you would like to share with our viewers today? Do your research and be brutally honest. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Vikram. It was a pleasure having you here. You shared some very valuable tips to help us better our interview skills. For more tips and do's and don'ts, please visit our website www.asktheexpert.com. You can also get a copy of Dr. Vikram's book. You can be hired for a special price of $20 only on the website. For now, it is goodbye from me, your host.